Hi, I'm Destiny Gardner and this is CMHS Crash Course. And today, we will be talking about the two sisters who became the first women to speak in front of a state legislator as representatives of the American Anti-Slavery Society. That's right, the Grimke sisters. Sarah and Angelina Grimke were born to John and Mary Grimke in the cradle of slavery on a plantation in South Carolina. The Grimke sisters, as they were known, grew up to despise slavery after witnessing its cruel effects at a very young age. Sarah later recalled that her father, the wealthy judge, held his 14 children to the highest standards of discipline and he sometimes required them to work in the fields, shelling corn, or picking cotton. Sarah stated, perhaps I am indebted partially to this for my lifelong detestation of slavery as it brought me in close contact with these unpaid toilers. John Grimke believed that women should be subordinate to men, so while he provided excellent education for his sons, he didn't give any of that to Sarah and Amy. In 1819, Sarah and her father went to Philadelphia so he could seek medical attention, and there they encountered Quakers who helped care for her father. After his death, Sarah returned to Charleston where her feelings against slavery were quickly renewed. Sarah converted to Quakerism and moved to Philadelphia in 1821. In 1829, Angelina followed in her footsteps. William Lloyd Garrison published a personal letter that Angelina had written to him in The Liberator. In her letter, Angelina encouraged Garrison to stand his ground even in the face of mob violence. If persecution is the means which God has ordained for the accomplishment of this great end, emancipation, then I feel as if I could say, let it come, for it is my deep, solemn, deliberate conviction that this is a cause worth dying for, she wrote. Despite the society not accepting women as public speakers and the disapproval from many Quakers, they soon got caught in anti-slavery movements. In 1837, Angelina wrote the appeal to women of the nominally free states. The outcry over the women abolitionists prompted Sarah to write the letters on the equality of the sexes in 1838. By the 1830s, the Grimke sisters were known not only as abolitionists, but the proponents of women's rights. Angela soon went on to marry a fellow abolitionist, Theodore Dwight Weld. They were later kicked out by the Quaker groups because Theodore wasn't a Quaker. Nevertheless, the three of them published the American Slavery as it is, testimony of a thousand witnesses in 1839. They soon moved to New Jersey and they began their work in education. They took students in to live with them in 1848 and by 1851 they had a boarding school. By this time the Civil War had already broken out so their solution and their way to help was writing Abraham Lincoln and showing their support. For him. In 1836, in Angelina's appeal to the Christian women of the South, she wrote, I know you do not make the laws, but I also know that you are the wives and mothers, the sisters and daughters of those who do. And if you really suppose you can do nothing to overthrow slavery, you are greatly mistaken. Her writing drew the ear of Southerners who opposed its abolitionist message and Northerners who felt that women had no business public speaking and things like that. For the rest of her life, Sarah continued her fight for women's rights and the fair treatment of African Americans. Uh, she was the vice president of the Massachusetts Women's Suffrage Association in 1868. Um, in 1870, she led a group of women to Hyde Park, Boston, 
to vote in the local election, which was illegal at the time. Sarah Grimke died on December 23rd, 1873. The Wells, on the other hand, retired from speaking, but they continued to attend anti-slavery meetings and they wrote abolitionist tracts. The couple moved in with Sarah and they bought a farm and the sisters made their living off of teaching. Uh, they moved to Hyde Park, Massachusetts in 1864. Um, Angelina Grimke died on October 26, 1879. This, is, this has been CMHS Crash Course. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.